What should great music sound like? Should it sound calm, polished, glossy, pretty? Or should it sound turbulent, unvarnished, raw, primal? Should it comfort us or challenge us? Should it engage with political questions or remain serenely above the fray? What sort of dramas can or should instrumental music enact? Should the crowd assimilate every individual? Or should some proudly, defiantly stand their ground? In this module, as with the piano sonatas we just examined in module three, we introduce another genre that we will return to in units two and three, the symphony. Every major city in Europe and its former colonies either hosts or aspires to host a permanent, full-time professional orchestra. And the central repertoire for those orchestras begins with Beethoven's nine symphonies. In Beethoven's time, a symphony was laid out according to a four-movement template. The same three movement types you learned for the sonata template, including the Sonata Allegro template for a sonata's first movement, plus a new inner movement, usually the third movement, but sometimes the second, called the menuetto, or scherzo. In either case, the movement incorporates a contrasting section called the trio. So please do take care to understand the relationships among these three items. Most of all, keep in mind that it's a choice between the labels menuetto and trio, or scherzo and trio. Time is limited, so in this course, we will not systematically study Beethoven's string quartets. But if they interest you, it's helpful to know that in Beethoven's time, the string quartet genre shared the same four-movement template as the symphony. So, although the instrumental sounds of a string quartet differ dramatically from those of an orchestra, you can take everything you learn about the norms and expectations of listening to a symphony and transfer it to the chamber music context of a string quartet. We also briefly examine two unfamiliar but important influences on Beethoven's symphonic style, French military music and the operas of Luigi Cherubini. Then, we will consider the questions, why is Beethoven's second symphony significantly more interesting than his first? And how does it foreshadow his subsequent towering achievements in the symphonic genre? Lastly, in wrapping up Unit 1, we will examine how ideas about music's purpose were changing during Beethoven's lifetime, and how those changes contributed to attention between his goals of achieving widespread fame and maintaining his standards of artistry. Previously, we contrasted classical simplicity with the complexity of Baroque music that preceded it. Now, we turn to the contrast between classical restraint and the emotional turmoil of the Sturm und Drang movement that foreshadowed the Romantic era of the 19th century and the aesthetic contrast between the merely decoratively beautiful versus the awe-inspiring, overwhelming sublime.